that's what we'll do now so let's begin with the simplest case of a portal frame in this portal frame we want to identify the translational degree of freedom we've already said that uh, you have two rotation unknowns and one translation unknown we are assuming all the members to be active so one simple way to do this is to see how it will deform and to not get confused by the rotations let's get rid of all the rotation so one simple thing we can do mentally is put hinges at all the joints okay so you've got four joints there put hinges there and play with this as you would play with a mechanism so if this were to move it will probably move like that we made it into a mechanism and you'll find that the entire top beam is going to slide either to the right or to the left by some quantity no translation is it clear to convert it into a chord rotation you will find that member bc will never undergo a chord rotation because it's going to always stay horizontal but ab and cd will undergo clockwise chord rotation if you assume delta to be positive to the right and assuming uh, tan theta or sin theta to be equal to theta because those displacements are very very small you find phi ab and phi cd are both equal to delta minus very easy if you have a shape like this where the beam is inclined no problem again we have only one sway degree of freedom because uh, this 4 minus 3 equal to 1 holds good here also again let's play with it let's introduce the hinges let's push it a little bit it will move like that you will find that in the displaced configuration the member bc will remain parallel to its original position there's no other way to draw it which means the horizontal displacement at b and c is still going to be the same you can call either of them delta and choose that as your unknown and now your chord rotation will be different for a b and c d for a b it will be delta by h1 and for c d it will be delta by h2 as simple as that this is all kind kinematics simply uh, understanding geometry playing with the figures let's take something more difficult okay here the the columns are inclined when the columns are inclined it's a little more tricky but still in this problem you have two rotational unknowns theta b and theta c and it looks like you have four translation unknown if you ignore actual if you uh, assume that actual deformations are significant which means a vertical and a horizontal translation at b and c but if you ignore actual trans uh, actual deformations then you have three constraining equations so you have only one sway degree of freedom let's see how this will deform when we introduce the hinges and when we push it slightly let's push it to the right you'll find that you'll get a shape like this there's no i mean all of us will get it you could even do it experimentally so once you have a shape like this your next here you have a situation where not only a, B, and C, D are undergoing chord rotations, and that to clockwise chord rotation. P, C also undergoes a chord rotation, and it's an anti clockwise chord rotation. You have only one translation unknown, and you could choose a horizontal movement of either B or C as the unknown delta. And so you got phi AB as delta by H1 and phi CD as delta by H2, where H1 and H2 are not the inclined lengths of those members, they are the vertical components of that length. So, next challenge is how do you find out an expression for the chord rotation in BC? It's not difficult what you have to do is to examine closely what is happening at b and c i have given you the answer there but let me also give you the derivation let's blow up that joint at b when you blow up the joint at b you'll find that 
this has happened and we make an assumption that the displacements are very small which means we can repair you have with this as center and this as radius you can draw an arc we replace the arc with a tangent okay okay which means we are assuming this to be 90 degrees and then when you blow this up even more you can find out how much is the vertical translation happening here so if this b b double dash is what we call delta and if this angle here is alpha the same angle it, it shows up here as alpha because we are assuming this to be 90 degrees then b dash b double dash the vertical movement of the joint b vertical component of the displacement of the joint b is easily obtainable as delta tan alpha that's how you get delta tan alpha here but we have one more movement of c going up and we have to add that and we have to prove that that's delta tan beta that can be proved if you blow up this joint if you blow up that joint c will move to c dash and you will find that we are assuming c c double dash to be delta and you can prove that this angle is beta it is the angle the inclined member makes with the vertical and this vertical displacement is obtainable as tan delta uh, delta tan beta so the net movement relative movement of the two ends b and c which is like a support settlement by the way it's like a support settlement is delta tan alpha plus delta tan beta and that if you divide by the horizontal length lbc you get uh, the chord rotation phi and you must remember to put a minus sign here if you are assuming delta positive this way you can also move the frame to the left and choose delta to the left if you wish but you have to be consistent right so with this we can now solve problem and today at the last example actually deals with this problem we will see how to solve it but we are going to use this equation uh, you could get problems like this okay there is a pitch portal frame and you can use similar derivations and find out now you have to choose two degrees of sway so let us see which two to take uh, you could take a horizontal translation at B, C and D, you will find that all three are going to be different. It is not like this problem that we saw earlier. All three horizontal translations or vertical translations are not going to be the same. You can take any two of them. The moment you take two of them, the third one will be related to those two. Which two is left to you? So if you push this slightly, it is going to move like that. Why do not we take the deflection the drift at B as delta, B as one unknown, B as the other unknown, you can see clearly that the way we pushed it delta B turns out to be more than delta D and then you can work out uh, the, the chord rotations, phi B and phi D are very straightforward, delta B by H and delta D by H. What about phi B C and what about phi C D? I leave it to you to do these calculations. This can be easily proved. Uh, phi BC is likely to be negative. You can see it is moving the other way. And phi CD is. The demonstration of the slope deflection method for problems with unknown sway. Take this problem. This is a problem with two members, and you can see that the, the horizontal load acting at P is sure to push this frame to the right, the roller support is going to drift and you know that you have unknown displacements, theta B is an unknown displacement, delta BC, I have written delta BC because delta B and delta C are the same if you assume BC to be actually rigid. As far as theta C is concerned, from our experience in module 2, we can take advantage of the fact that we know the bending moment at C is 0, so we do not look into theta C. So, our minimum degree of kinematic indeterminacy is 2. 
we'll show you later a shortcut where you can even reduce this to one okay that's how to do that we'll see later let's move slowly let's assume that there are two the next job is to find the fixed end moments how do you find fixed end moments you draw a primary structure where you arrest the degrees of freedom that you've identified as your unknowns so your theta b should be zero and your delta b c should be zero and whatever fixed end moments you get in those members are your fixed end moments so clearly a b will have no fixed end moments because there's no intermediate load acting on it but b c will have and b c will because it's uh, now a prop can't leave up because you've arrested only b you've not arrested c you know the fixed end moment is minus 1.5 times the regular fixed end moment which is pl by 8 right so that's easy to do next step write down the slope deflection equations for each element there are two elements here so for a b you can write down we've done this before for b c only one equation is needed m f b c is m f not b c plus 3 e i by l into theta b there's no sway component in b c please note so most people will write the sway thing and then delete it you don't need to do that there's no sway here and actually theta a also you can delete from here so it simplifies okay you've got your slope deflection equation now there's a challenge you need to you have two unknowns theta b and delta b c you need two equilibrium equations one equilibrium equation we are familiar with so let's first write down the slope deflection equation in a matrix form we've got all the answers if you know theta b you know delta b c you can find the solution very interesting this delta b c doesn't affect the bending moment in the beam this delta b c affects only m a b and m b a but uh, even to get this theta b it is the solution is coupled with delta b c so you have to solve you need two equations what are your two equations so first equation corresponding to theta b is yes can I get uh, get the audience now? I want you to tell me the two. This one is straightforward. Tell me what this. Can I get some response from the audience? You have to use a slope deflection equation and do some addition, subtraction. And what is the first equilibrium equation? Can I hear a response? What is the equilibrium equation corresponding to theta b? in this problem very simple you have to play with these three equations m a b m b a m b c you have to use two of them m b a plus m b c equal to zero perfect that is the correct equation but we need two of them you have to give me one more equation corresponding to the unknown delta b c what is that m c b equal to zero is no 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 that is corresponding to theta c that mcb equal to 0 we have already taken advantage of in reducing the indeterminacy and ignoring theta c that's all out m, 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 m? m a b equal to 0 m a b is not 0 how can it be m a b is a fixed end there you will have a moment m a b is 2 e i by l into theta b minus 6 e i by l squared into delta b c how is it 0 no I'll give you a clue. It has something to do with shear, not moment. That force P will come into the equation. The horizontal force P, not the vertical. Yeah. Let's go back. I'm giving you the answer. Delta is, first of all, it's a horizontal movement. Okay, it's not a rotation. But whatever equation you write, you have to bring in the M, A, B, M, B, A, M, B, C into the picture. How do you do that? Well, we are saying that Sigma fx equal to 0, which means the horizontal hc, hc, h, hc is equal to 0 and ha will be there. So, hc equal to 0, that is what you should have said, not mcb equal to 0, hc equal to 0. Now, that hc, how do you get hc? So, you can take separate out the two free bodies you will find that the column will have horizontal shear forces which is nothing but sum of m a b and m b a divided by l 
right so this we can call it h a or h b whatever you want we are just calling it h here if you go back to the overall free body this means is not the direction is as is to the right moments are assumed clockwise positive so this plus p must be equal to 0 so you brought in a new equation which involves the lateral load p it also involves the moments in the column it does not involve the moment in the beam very interesting that's your second equation and this is the challenge in writing the equation and i think good examinations small quizzes is to just to make you write the equation not to solve these full problems once you have the equilibrium equation we'll solve this problem later you can solve and you can get the solution then and uh, get your answers we'll do this problem later you've got all the answers you can draw your free body diagram bending moment diagram shear force diagram and the deflected shear okay now we move on to applying this to simple 